Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns, here with Santa, who needs very little introduction. We have been reviewing all of the videos for the Christmas Ornament Wood Turning Challenge. Now, he's a little bit hoarse right now, so he's saving his voice, but he wants me to thank everyone for submitting their videos. He thinks it's really increased the spirit of Christmas. What? Oh, but he wants another ornament, one that would really hammer home the spirit of Christmas. What would that be? He suggests an ornament that represents the Star of Bethlehem, the sign given to all the world of the birth of the Savior Jesus Christ. What would that look like? Oh, okay. Let's do a Star of Bethlehem. First order of business is to, of course, give the wood a couple of spins to make sure it uh, doesn't run into anything as you start turning and jump off the lathe. This piece of walnut is a little bit difficult. It's a product of urban forestry. It's not uh, well dried, but it is dry, but it's not well dried. It has a lot of checks and wind, wind shakes, and so it, uh, it splinters very easily uh, depending on where it hits. But uh, first to mark the length that I want the body of the of the star to be, part off, make the groove, and then waste out the outside. You can see how that that wood with the bedan there just kind of shears away uh, more than uh, being cut away. And that's a function of the checks and the wind shakes. So I have to be very careful on this. Then I'll do some rough rounding with a, a gouge, then switch over to a skew for more refined work. I wanted to be very careful that I didn't be overly aggressive and, and cause it to splinter. Difficulty, of course, in making a round object is actually making it round, so we'll call this near round for the ornament body. And then make sure that I've got it to the approximate size, then flip it over and mount it into a four jaw chuck so that I can refine the body. I've got to turn the very end to expose the top, and then I need to drill holes that I'll use to mount the rays. Sanded it up through all the grits, finish it. Then I discovered I, did, I didn't want to mar the finish, so I used covered the entire bulb with blue tape, hoping that it would not uh, lift the finish, and then made the marks along the hemisphere and halfway between the hemisphere and the center on both ends. And then using the index on the chuck, I marked every 90 degrees on the main hemisphere and then offset it by 45 and marked every 90 degrees on the other two circles on the sphere. I knew the difficulty here would be getting the holes all drilled uh, exactly tangential to or perpendicular to the tangent of the sphere. I decided to do it without extensive jigging. It was a little bit off in the end, but uh, it worked. I had my wife stand by to the side to sight on it to make sure that I had it as level as possible and use the tool rest as a guide on it. And then drilled them just about three eighths of an inch deep to receive the quarter inch end of the finials. Then at the end to drill out the center or the top and the bottom holes, this will be a hole drilled clear through the bowl, ball, uh, the body, from the top down to the bottom. I had to leave enough of a tenon on the bottom so that it would actually stay on as I finished it, finished drilling it. very easy while he's drilling it, make sure that I can... It was wandering just a little bit. Then strip off the tape, see how it all turned out, and discover that there's a little bit of damage to it. So yeah, I'll need to, after I remount it, just give it another little bit of finish and make sure it's ready to go. 
Then it's off to finial action. Use a piece of maple. Then rough it out here with a bowl gouge. Is a good enough job for me. Then the top finial needed to be about a three inch length and then a little bit more for the tenon to hold it on with. So then start forming it and then I decided well I'd better make sure that I have the the tenon well marked and so I'm using a bedan to form the tenon and a little end wrench to measure where, when I'm going to get to a quarter inch so scrape a little measure ah there we got it let's go for it so I wanted a very simple finial for this essentially just flare out a little bit from the tenon and then flare basically down to the other end on the top and the bottom I decided well especially the bottom I decided that uh, it would need a little bit of a bulb I didn't want it a sharp point because I was afraid that uh, my grandchildren would be playing with this I didn't want a, a really sharp point so I put a little ball end on the bot on the end of the bottom finial the top finial would have the hanger on it so it's protected then the short side ones I left as being somewhat pointed but certainly not a long narrow sharp point and very careful work with the skew uh, with this long of a piece of wood sticking out I was fortunate to be able to leave the tailstock up to take a lot of the pressure even though you can see it deflect just a little bit as I am tooling it. Then of course the better end to tool it just a little bit more and we're off and going. Then repeat uh, for the top finial or for the bottom finial which is a little bit longer and then for each of the 12 side finials same pattern there's just a little variation. They weren't turned by machine. They were hand turned, but they're a very close pattern. But essentially, rinse and repeat. By the time I finished 12, I actually had it down pretty pat and could turn one out in short order. Sand it, finish it, part it off, have it all ready to go. Then mount them all together, and I think it turned out well. A star of Bethlehem, sign of the birth of Jesus Christ. On behalf of Santa and the sponsors, Carl Jacobson and myself, Alan Stratton, we thank everyone who has participated in the Christmas Ornament Wood Turning Challenge. And thank you, and Merry Christmas to all, and to all, a good night.